Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. This is uh, the seventh session in the Public Pre-K Technical Assistance Series. My name is Nicole Medor. I'm the Early Childhood Specialist here at the Department of Education on the Early Learning Team, and I have two of my colleagues here. I'll pass it over to Marcy to introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Marcy Whitcomb. I'm the Public Pre-K Consultant for the Early Learning Team, and I will throw it up to Sue. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sue Gallant. I'm the Pre-K Expansion Consultant and provide technical assistance for MJRP districts. Thank you, guys. So also a part of our team you'll see here is Leanne Larson. She's the director of our early learning team. We also work with Stacy McCoy, who is our Head Start State Collaboration Director. And we also have Jane Kersling, who is our Pre-K Grant Coordinator. So today's session, we're going to talk about two topics. One is the early childhood development teacher training, um, and we'll sort of talk more about and clarify for folks the certification process for uh, lead teachers in the public pre-K classroom. And then also we're going to touch upon Main Roads to Quality, which is a Chapter 124 requirement to be registered within their system, which is a professional development network. Um, and Marcy will talk to us more about uh, the importance of that and, and what that is agency has to offer. So certification in pre-K. Public pre-K classrooms must employ teachers in ed techs with specific certifications that are awarded by our main Department of Education's certification team. So you'll recall from a previous session, as well as in Chapter 124, that all of our public pre-K classrooms must maintain a ratio of one adult to eight students. Um, so some of our classrooms will cap out at 16 students and we'll have one lead teacher and we'll, with an ed tech present. Um, some classrooms in, in many parts of our states are smaller and they may have eight or even less students, in which case they'll just be a lead teacher. Um, so we just wanted to sort of walk through the requirements of that lead teacher and ed tech if applicable for classrooms that have more than eight students. So teachers and or the ed techs could be employees of the school district, or if you're in a formal partnership with a community provider like a Head Start program or a child care center, then part of your partnership will discuss who employs whom. Um, so we are we have examples where all the staff, teachers and ed techs, are employees of the school, examples of where they're employees of the partner. And in some partnerships, there's a mix. Um, one may provide the teacher, one may provide the ed tech, vice versa. Um, so there's lots of different scenarios for gaining the staff that's required. Um, but regardless of who is employing the individual, certification still applies. So these are just a quick rundown of some of the certification requirements for lead teachers. The endorsement that we're most familiar with and has been around um, since the Chapter 124 was created is the endorsement 081, which is the early childhood teacher. So this is meant to function um, for the teacher certificate. It allows that person or the holder to teach students aged birth through kindergarten. Um, so this is why it's a, definitely a popular option for public pre-K classrooms. Additionally, we have the 029. Um, historically, the 029 was K3. Um, certified teacher in, in kindergarten through third grade. And re with the recent chapter 115 um, rule changes, they have added pre-K as a grade level to the 029. Um, so this endorsement on a teacher certificate now allows the holder to teach students pre-K through grade three. So a little bit more flexibility in the public school space for individuals with the 029. It is important to note, however, that teachers will need to reapply for their 029 endorsement in order for it to be valid in pre-K. So if you have an individual with the 029 for K3 and you're wanting to perhaps have that person teach in the pre-K classroom, then they will need to reapply to have the um, added pre-K endorsement to that. Um, and that's true for some other certifications, which I'll run through in a moment as well. The 081 um, has been left unchanged as far as the grade span or rather the age span that uh, the 081 endorses. Um, and I did just wanna back out of here really quick and show folks where they can access some more information about certification. 
So on our main DOE website, the top tab that says educators is a drop down menu. And if you go to certification and credentialing, then that will bring you here. And this is the new homepage for our team uh, for this office in DOE. And they have a number of resources available. Um, the one that I most often go to is certification requirements. They also have some frequently asked questions, how to become a main educator, the application process or a renewal process. You can um, log in to see where your, what your status is for your certification, fingerprinting, et cetera. So I did just wanna point out um, sort of what's available here as well as news and updates, which I'm actually just going to click into certification requirements because this has some of those news updates as well. So when you scroll down certification requirements, you'll see here some of the updated pieces to chapter 115. The old rules are below, um, and some of these are grandfathered in, which is why I believe certification has these linked and still available. But moving forward, the updated versions, part one and part two, are here. You'll find the 081 cert certification requirements and the 029 certification requirements, among others, in the part two update. So clicking on this link will open up a Word document for you, and that's where you'll be able to see um, what course requirements there are for each of those. Okay, so I'm just gonna, whoops, click through here real quick. So other um, requirements for support staff, um, as well as other subjects are here. So I mentioned if you're going to have more than eight students in your classroom, you do need to have another adult present for ratio reasons. And typically that other adult is an ed tech. So chapter 124 requires that that individual hold at least an ed tech two endorsement. You could also hire somebody that has their ed tech three. So here's um, just a brief outline of what those the difference between the two of those. Chapter 115 updates also added pre-K as a grade to the following endorsements. So you'll see here that teachers um, can teach pre-K through grade 12 for all subjects other than art and music, but um, there is a separate one for music and art <laughs> that pre-K was also added to, as well as the, our world language teacher, our English of speakers of other languages teacher, native language Wabanaki endorsement was updated, as well as that one for health and physical education. Um, endorsement 282, this is another common uh, certificate that folks in public pre-K might hold. Um, this is for a teacher of children with disabilities for B5, birth to five years old. Um, the 286, 291, and 292 endorsements were all updated to include pre-K. Um, as well as the adapted phys ed teacher, gifted and talented teacher, our library media specialists, our school counselors, and our school nurses. Um, so again, folks in your school that hold these would need to reapply to have the pre-K added. It's not an add excuse me, it's not an automatic add-on. Um, they would need to reach out to have it added to their endorsement. Um, our certification team has a number of specialists that are able to clarify any questions for folks um, or help you navigate some of the nuances of these requirements. Um, I, I turn to them all the time. They're incredibly helpful and knowledgeable of the, of the rule. Okay, so I'm going to shift gears a little bit and hand it over to Marcy to talk to us about Main Roads to Quality. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, so... Another piece of chapter 124, another requirement is that all staff in a pre-K class, public pre-K classroom are registered with Main Roads to Quality. Main Roads to Quality is our professional development network for early childhood educators in the state of Maine. Um, they do have a sort of professional career lattice that given um, degrees, trainings, that sort of thing, um, you can move up levels. <clears throat> so what's important about Main Roads main roads to quality is that they hold all of your contact hours in one place and they accumulate your hours for you. So when you're into, when you register, you will go in, you'll upload your training certificates, um, any degrees, that sort of thing, and it will hold it all in one place in one tab for you. 
which is really great. So when you go to recertify, it's all right in one spot. Um, and also they offer a lot of low cost professional development courses. And we're gonna look at that in just a moment. Um, it's important to note that ed tech positions assistance in the pre public pre-K classroom need to obtain a level four on the uh, main roads career lattice within three years of being employed. Um, and so when they're putting in their hours, again, those accumulated hours will register with main roads to quality and they will send you out the new levels as you um, accomplish those. Um, it also, it works to ensure that ed techs um, and teachers who have maybe um, focus in a different career field or different coursework other than early childhood, it's a great place for them to get foundational knowledge and coursework at a low cost to the to themselves or the district um, through the professional development network. Um, it's also where our quality rating and improvement um, sits for childcare. Um, again, it's a requirement of Chapter 124 for all public pre-K classroom staff, including teachers and ed techs. When you register, you'll need to follow this code to find your um, school, if, find this link to find your school code because it will ask you for that. It'll come up with a drop down. Um, you can find your school and then it will give you your code. And then you can begin inputting professional development hours and degrees. You can email copies of certificates. You can send them through the mail. Um, if you take courses directly through Main Roads to Quality, which are online 100%, they will update your and put your um, hours and your certificate in there if it's a main roads course. Um, another, we're gonna go look at the site in just a minute, but one more thing, uh, we're actually gonna go right now. <laughs> but one more thing I wanted to add was main roads to quality has a lot of technical assistance tools as well. One thing that's really great for our pre-K classrooms is they offer what they call a warm line. And I'm actually gonna throw that link in the chat. Oops. Um, the warm line is essentially um, inclusion specialists who, when you call or email, they'll work with your teachers. They possibly would do classroom visits. Maybe they talk on the phone, but they work on it, um, helping uh, teachers and classroom staff with inclusion of all students, meaning students who may have disabilities, who may have mental health concerns, who may display challenging behaviors, um, to work with um, teachers in classrooms to sort of help with the supports to keep children in the classrooms and to keep um, the inclusion happening in the classroom. Um, what I will say is that it's not an emergency line. So if what's happening in your classroom deems an emergency where somebody might be injured or something of that sort, um, it's not an emergency line. Thank you. So then we're also gonna go and look at the um, calendar, the training calendar, just to see. So. This is the main page and then it'll take you to the training calendar. So essentially, um, Main Roads Quality would be the training agency. And if you go under location or format, you can do statewide under location. And then under format, I believe you can do online. Um, I'm not sure they do a lot of face-to-face -face or hybrid at the moment. I think they're still doing them mostly online. And then um, if you go down, if you scroll down, I think there's a search button. Yeah, find training right there. And then so they do offer, again, this is a birth to five um, network. So they do offer training for infants and toddlers, partners in caregiving. This is a family caregiving, family care, uh, caring for families and caregivers. Um, we do trainings for the main early learning and developmental standard, which is a 30 hour training. Um, it's eight hour, eight week module. Um, course, but if you haven't had that, it's an amazing course and really good to have if you're in a public pre-K classroom. Um, engaging professional development with adult learners, foundations of health, wellness, and safety, which is also a really great course for the classroom. Um, and these are positive supports and challenging behaviors. That's an amazing one. Um, I've actually taken that one before, and it's really, um, it's great if you're in a classroom with small children because we know that we do definitely have challenging behaviors and there's a lot of positive supports and strategies that are given. Um, and then early childhood education theory to practice is another one. A lot of research and articles that they throw out and different things that you can do. So there's a lot of trainings. These trainings are generally, I wanna say 20 to $30, depending on how many hours they are. 
Um, so they're very low cost to you or your district. And I'm going to throw it over to Sue, who's gonna take us through other ways for credentialing and certification in our state. Thank you, Marcy. So frequently educators who are working through a conditional certificate or ed techs who are looking to boost their level on the career lattice with MRTQ, reach out to us for resources for coursework. And so I'm going to throw the link in the chat for our guidebook. We've talked about the guidebook in previous sessions, but it's a wealth of information about all things public pre-K. And in the guidebook, there is an appendix on page 23 that provides a list of main colleges and universities that offer early childhood education programs, as well as the 081 certificate that will help with 081 certification eligibility. And many of those offer online courses that you can access as well as some hybrid models. And then, and then achieving contact hours and certification, there are a number of approved programs. You can find those at this link and I will pop these links into the chat as well so that you can have them. When I find my chat box again, it went away, there it is. So you can check this site out and it will give you a number of approved programs. The Maine Educators Consortium is an online program currently operating in collaboration with New Hampshire, Southern New Hampshire University that offers graduate credit or, or bachelor's credit for online coursework. And this covers early childhood as well as administrator certificates and a wealth of other courses. And they do offer all of those that are necessary for your 081 certificate. Main Roads to Quality continues to be, as Marcy said, a great resource for educators um, in the early childhood field and administrators. They also offer training. And then we also have a number of recorded webinars on our DOE professional learning webinar library and offer ongoing trainings throughout the year. This will be a year full of a number of training opportunities that will be included on the calendar with upcoming trainings at the Maine Educator Summit the Early Childhood Conference that will be in Portland in October, as well as ongoing communities of practice that educators will be able to access. So I hope that you'll check the calendar frequently and see what opportunities are available. Thanks, Sue. Before I went to the next slide, I did just want to mention quickly um, that our professional learning webinar library is um, a collection of recordings that DOE specialists have um, hosted over the course of the last few years. Many of them do offer contact hours, but some do not. So um, I just wanted to give folks a heads up about that. It's a common misconception that we um, answer get referrals for and requests about often. So if a recording offers a contact hour, then directions on how to get that certificate will be provided within the recording. Um, if there's a recording there that doesn't was not meant to be offered as professional learning and therefore does not offer a contact hour certificate, then nothing um, will be mentioned about that in the recording. If you do have any difficulty or questions about that, then we recommend you reach out to the host directly. Um, every recording should have the host's name and contact information. Information. Um, so feel free to to do that. Um, and of course, you know, we're happy to help you navigate that as we're able as well. But like I said, the webinar has um, buckets of categories from social emotional learning to um, early childhood to school nursing um, to certification, etc. So some of it is created and offered and hosted from our early learning team, but much of it is not. So um, just be aware that uh, of those pieces to keep in mind. So we're always here for your questions. You can reach out to us, any member of the team through email, and we will get back to you as quickly as we can with questions. And we encourage you to reach out and contact us for support. 